Welcome to another wearable teardown here at Adafruit. Today we're looking inside the Muse, a brainwave sensing headband for assisted meditation. It pairs over Bluetooth with your phone to guide you through a meditation session with real-time feedback on your brain's activity, followed by some stat tracking that helps you improve your calm over time. There's some interesting hardware going on inside this device, so let's see what Lady Ada has to say about the design of the circuit. Thanks for taking it apart. We've got two circuit boards in here that we've pried out of sort of the ear area. And here's a micro USB connector. We've got, you know, probably polarity protection diode here. This is probably the charger for the battery because it's right here next to the bat minus and bat plus connector. Given all of these resistors and capacitors here and it says test point, and the fact that they probably do have to test the electrodes makes you think that this is probably an op amp of some sort, either a single or dual op amp and it's amplifying the signals or, or buffering the signals somehow so that these can be tested um, during assembly and manufacture. And then we've also got you know, a date code and Muse, so that's kind of nice. And then on the back, alongside with the battery, there's this connector, and this is for that flex circuit that goes around the headband. Here is the other circuit board. So this goes on the other ear area. So let's check this out. On this side, we have another micro USB connector. Um, there's one on either side. This one is definitely connected to this chip, which is a PIC24. So this is a PIC microcontroller. This is probably doing like all of the USB and calculation for all the sensing technology here. On the side here, it's going to look accelerometer. Accelerometers always have this kind of uh, chunky look. This is an MMA8543 uh, or similar family, low cost triple axis accelerometer. Uh, you got a lot of test points here, probably for programming. Over here, it looks like there's either some sort of buck or boost converter. There's an inductor or something, a little chip, and then a switch, which you can use to set it between modes. And then here's where we get to the really interesting stuff. So there's like a lot of resistors and capacitors here. And this really lets us know there's definitely analog stuff going on because there's just so many resistors and capacitors, way more than just that you would need for power filtering. And you can look up these two components. We've got the OPA 4374, that's a quad rail-to-rail -rail CMOS op amp. And then the littler chip over here is an MCP 6L02. So these are both precision op amps. So this is the analog part that takes the sensing from your noggin and amplifies that signal and sends it into this microcontroller that does the actual digital signal processing. So let's flip over. On this side, we also have another flex connector. There's some diodes here. That's, that's good for you know, signal level protection. And then here we've got a big module. So this is kind of interesting. And we'll peel this off carefully to reveal the RN42. The RN42 is from the Roving Networks, uh, which is now owned by Microchip. And it's a Bluetooth Classic module, which is very interesting because all the wearables that we looked at so far are Bluetooth low energy. Which is kind of interesting because if you are not using Bluetooth Low Energy here, using Bluetooth Classic, then how are they using it with Apple devices? Because you need that certification. And so when I was looking up this chip and I was realizing I couldn't figure out what this chip was. And that's when it hit me. This is that made for iPod or made for iOS um, authorization chip. And this is the uh, uh, MFI, M made for iPod, uh, 337. 3959, and this is the authentication chip that this module used to let it talk to iOS. This must, must have been designed uh, quite a few years ago before Bluetooth Low Energy became popular because if this was made now, they would definitely go with BLE. Bluetooth Low Energy is one of the few wireless protocols that iOS, Apple, and Android both support, and you don't have to go through any sort of like made for iPod or certification process and it'll be a lot cheaper and a lot easier for them not to need to use the RN42 and this like annoying expensive chip that you have to buy only from Apple. Both of these have a little snap connector on the side and they plug into these two pieces here. I removed this hot glue. This flex circuit connects to the two pieces so you know the battery can power the circuit on the other side. So that's good for space. You have you know, two equal lumps on either side of the ear. But this is also used as a sensor. They actually just used the circuit itself, the flex circuit itself, and played it with what looks like silver, which makes sense, it's you know, hygienic, and then plug that into the two circuits on either side. So this flex circuit not only is used for power and signal, but is also the sensor itself. You've got three reference sensors 
in the front, and then two more sensors on the side for temple measurements. But they also need to get some measurements from like sort of behind your ear. So these parts are actually conductive rubber. And you know, they're not going to be conductive enough to light up an LED, but they're conductive enough to just get that signal from behind your ear into the circuit board. And how they do that is really interesting. So let's look on the microscope. So here we've got this flexible conductive rubber. And this is bonded, connected right up to this metal piece here, which is used as sort of also part of the electrode. And then this metal piece comes out to this part of the enclosure. And on the circuit board itself, on each one, we've got this little clip. And then when this is put together, it presses up against the metal part, which presses up against the conductive rubber, which also feels really nice, but is also usable as an electrode. It's a really interesting wearable, and uh, I'm going to go meditate. For this and many other teardowns, we use the Adafruit USB microscope and its articulated stand. What wearable device should we take apart next? Let us know in the comments and you can catch up on all our previous teardowns in the teardowns playlist. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to catch the latest videos from Adafruit. This week we're tearing down the Brainwave cat ears from Nekomimi. This week we're going to be tearing down the Ringly. It's a dainty cocktail ring that's also a Bluetooth notification device.